a happy Easter and Passover to all of you. It's lovely to see you for the fourth concert of our Sunday piano classics. And hello, Peter. Hello, Valentin. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Easter for Ostern from Germany. I wish you all a nice afternoon together. Now, if you look at the program, you'll find that today we have a bit of a French theme. There's Debussy and Chopin, and we start with a French suite by Bach. There are very few pictures of Bach from his lifetime, and most of us know him from a portrait which was painted very late in his life. If you look at that picture, he cuts a somewhat austere and remote figure. But would you know that for 10 years he performed in a coffee house in Leipzig? It's very likely that he also played this French suite there. I think dance music in the French style goes down rather well in these sorts of places. This is really as light-hearted as Bach ever gets and you will hear a lovely collection of different dances. First there is an Allemande, followed by a faster Courant. Next is my favourite piece in this suite, a slow Sarabon. Then there's a Gavotte, a Polonaise, a Minuet, a Bourrée, and finally a Gigue. Don't worry if you can't remember all these titles, because Peter has been tasked with giving you the title of each dance as I play them. I'm sure you're in very safe hands there. The last dance I mentioned, the jig, is actually an Irish jig, and I hope that you will be jigging along with me until the end. Thank you. 
French suite by Bach. Oh, thank you, Sarah. That's very nice of you. Thank you, Rochelle. It's lovely to see you all. Hello, Stefan. Wonderful. Hello, Imogen. Great. Thank you. That's very nice. Yes, this was a little. Oh, thank you, Rachel. This is a little visit to a Leipzig coffee house of the 18th century. Thank you, Sarah. It's lovely to see your comments. Oh, Paul, thank you very much. Anna, lovely. Yes, this also gives me a, a moment to, to recover from the Bach and launch myself into a, our next piece, which couldn't really be more different from the Bach. I played some of the other impromptus by Schubert uh, for you in, in previous concerts, and I mentioned then that he wrote these pieces after he went to see Beethoven at his, on his deathbed. Schubert also was one of the pallbearers at Beethoven's funeral. And I mention all this because here he takes on Beethoven on his home turf. This impromptu is in C minor. And ever since the famous opening of the of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. The key of C minor really does belong to Beethoven. So it was very brave of, of Schubert to take on Beethoven in this impromptu in C minor. And I love this piece because it brings two incredible creative geniuses together. Here Schubert builds a musical memorial to Beethoven while pushing the door to the new romantic music wide open. Beethoven's death marked the end of the classical style. 
and we're now at the start of the new era of romantic music. You may be forgiven for thinking that this piece is rather too dark to be called romantic. But romantic music is all about deep emotions and those you will find here in spades. The piece begins with the single loud octave G and then you hear a very quiet tune without any accompaniment. The tune is then repeated with some chords and out of this simple call and response pattern the piece gradually grows. Later the music is reminiscent of Schubert's song called The Earl King. In this song a father and son are riding across a frozen lake while being haunted by the spectre of the Earl King. And Basically, the Earl King ends up killing the son. Now, Beethoven was on one hand the musical father figure to Schubert, but also, of course, represented the ultimate rival. Schubert died only a year after Beethoven, but in this short time, he changed the course of music. And you can hear it all in this piece.
Oh, thank you very much, Esther. Vielen Dank. Frohe Ostern. Mm. Ah, this piece takes a lot out of you, but it gives even more back. Oh, thank you very much, Adrian. Danke, Klaus. Frohe Ostern. It's, it's lovely to see you all. Mm. This is a, it's a great piece. Oh, hello, Kerstin in Berlin. Lovely. It's really good to, to see you all and to see your comments. It makes me really feel as if I'm with you now and, and playing to you live. And, and that's really the, the, the feeling I, I want to have. And I'm sure that will come back to us. Thank you, Suman. That's lovely. Mm. Bettina, lovely. I think you're in Abu Dhabi, if I'm not completely wrong. Amazing. It's lovely to see people from around the world tuning in and, and, and sharing this music with us. Um, now, of course, we have one of the most famous pieces of, of music altogether, the Claire de Lune by, by, by Debussy. And we're jumping to the end of the Romantic period here. Um, soon after Claire de Lune, Debussy changed his style to Impressionism and left Romantic music behind. But what a beautiful send-off this is. It's very strange that Debussy left this piece apparently in a drawer for 15 years until he published it. He certainly could have done with the mummy because on the day he married he had to give a piano lesson first so he and his wife could go and have a decent breakfast afterwards. If you want to find out more about detail about this piece, Peter and I have produced a video explaining it, which you can watch on YouTube on, on our channel. Let me just say that Claire de Lune means moonlight, and this is from the Sweet Burger Mask, which just like the Bach you heard at the beginning is a suite of dances. So this is really a slow dance in moonlight.
thank you very much, Rochelle. Mm. Thank you, Rachel. Yes, I feel like I'm, I'm, I've taken myself to another, another world altogether. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful piece, the, the, the Claire de Lune. The whole suite is wonderful. Um, and, and maybe I'll play some of the other movements as well. Mm. Um, thank you very much. Oh, Richard. Mm. Oh, it's nice, nice to see so many of you coming in. Hello, Christoph and, and Richard. Really nice to see you. And it's good to see the German comments as well. Um, lovely. Oh, it's over to you, Peter, now. Yes, thank you, Valentin. Uh, really nice. Uh, does it take? <laughs> need, need a few seconds to get to the next point. Just uh, give you a short break from your playing before we come to the term. Uh, and as usual, uh, just announce the next concert. First important remark I have to make is the next concert will be in four weeks time. So we will skip one weekend because uh, maybe you can better explain it because you have a concert, will not be at home. Um, and uh, then we also um, decided to have a program which has some relationship to America. And uh, we will use the time in between. We will, of course, announce and probably publish one or two introductions to some of the pieces. So I, I really hope, we both hope, you will be back with us on uh, Sunday, uh, 2nd of May. Please um, invite your friends. Uh, it's nice to have this community growing and uh, we would, of course, appreciate if uh, you invite, you recommend it to, to your friends. Thank you very much. Over to you, Valentin. Maybe a few words in the program if you want. Yes. Um, well, I will be uh, performing in the Caribbean, actually. So I'm extremely lucky to be able to get away. And uh, in a way, the um, you can see some ocean waves and reflections in the water in the in the program there. And and there's some American music by by Gershwin and of course. Chrysler and Rachmaninoff lived in America too, and so did this Gottschalk is an American composer. So the, the, the second part of, of the program is really a bit of a postcard from America. That's the idea here. Well, thank you for your comments there, Ralf and, and, and Sarah. Lovely. Um, so yes, th this will be the program now in four weeks time, not in, in two weeks. I'm, I'm really, really sorry. I'm sorry to, that I, I can't play in, in two weeks, but I'm, I'm too far away and I can't live stream from there. Um, but let's, we, we have a bit more Chopin. It's a bit of a traditional finish for our concerts to finish with some Chopin. Um, and um, we have, we have, first we have two etudes, two studies by Chopin. Mm. And I will say something again before the Barcarolle, but um, you could say that nothing changed the way the pianos played more radically than the etudes by Chopin. They brought a completely new approach to the instrument and they are a milestone to reach for anyone playing the piano. These two etudes which you're hearing now were actually the first Chopin ever wrote and that alone would make them very interesting. But they're far more than mere exercises. Uh, the first one is inspired by Beethoven. It is in the same key as Beethoven's Appassionata, and it even quotes the theme of the first movement. The second one, the F major study, is more playful, but also has wonderfully inventive pianistic coloring and some dramatic climaxes.
Chopin actually are really always a challenge and, and it mm, play just one of them is never easy but um, it, it, it's, it's, it, it, it does feel very rewarding they're, they're so colorful and, and, and inventive um, so I, I struggled with them all my life and, and I love struggling on with them now we come of course to the last piece on the program and um, Chopin wrote the Barcarolle just as his long relationship with the famous novelist Chausson was coming to an end. I talked about her in the last concert when I played the raindrop, raindrop prelude from their ill-fated trip to Mallorca. Despite the male-sounding pen name, she was a formidable lady who smoked cigars and sometimes dressed in male clothes. But when they finally broke up, this also broke Chopin really, he never really quite recovered from it. You can hear how he has put the fragility and volatility of love to music in this Barcarolle, but of course together with this beauty as well. I think he never wrote a better piece than this and there's no more to be said about it. I hope you enjoy it.
another world and I did I didn't think I was in my own home anymore thank you so much that's really nice mm. yes the, the bark roll I, I it's 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 always such an incredible incredible journey this piece and and it's lovely to see your comments Esther thank you very much mm. oh yes <laughs> thank you oh hello Imo thank you lovely Yes, I will. I will play concerts again when it's when it's possible. Um, thank you. A very happy Easter to you, Paul, and to you, Christoph. Okay, I will. I will play. A, a, it, it's a bit of a tradition to play an encore and to sort of make the hour full for our concert. I will play you a little piece, and um, it's it's my little farewell for for the next four weeks. But of course, see you back on the second of May, and this is. Um, a waltz by Chopin. to see them and I wish you all a very happy Easter and yeah same from my side thank you very much Valentin also to you on behalf of the whole audience happy Easter and um, yeah, I cannot I click on all these comments as quick as necessary <laughs> while I'm talking it was a pleasure, I think, also this uh, block of four concerts, or five if you count the pilot one, really nice, and I'm sure when you're back in the Caribbean, we will continue yes. here with the same tradition. Uh, nice day to you over there in Great Britain, and to everybody, all the best and happy Easter from my side. Over to you, Valentin. Lovely. Thank you very much. And I loved your comments. I will respond to them. And happy Easter. <laughs>